Hey everybody, Dave here and welcome back. Today is all about making your own tog jigs. I'm going to show you how to pour them, how to paint them, and make them real pretty. And I'm going to show you just how easy and simple it is. Hey, so before we jump into things, one of the things I just wanted to share with you is this. And that is, you know, pouring your own jigs, no matter what it is, can be a little bit of expense up front. But that doesn't mean it makes them prohibitive from you to doing them. It's just that you really should weigh out how many jigs you use a year as compared to the upfront cost of getting, you know, like a toaster oven and uh, a pour pot and, you know, some molds and hooks and things like that. I figure you can start uh, for about $175. But if you figure the TOG rigs, you know, TOG jigs run about $4 a piece, say, and you use maybe $100 a year, well, that's $400. So for $175 up front, you could make 100 jigs. And, uh, you know, so that's quite a savings. So it all depends on how much you use a year and, you know, whether you think it's worth it. For me, I use it to make bucktails. I use it to make freshwater jigs. I use it to make uh, spinner bodies, uh, my muzzle loader bullets. So for me, it really does pay to have a pour pot and stuff. And so that's just something to consider. Um, moving forward. So with that out of the way, uh, let's just jump over and I'll take you right through the whole process. So pouring tog jigs uh, actually just starts with the mold. So now this mold here is actually a lima bean mold or uh, as some call it a flathead jig mold. And these are what the jigs look like right here. They're flat, okay. And you know we're used to having uh, stand-up tog jigs, the ones where the hooks stay on end like this, and they actually, some of them stick up a little bit, you know, on the sides like that. And so the hook is, is in a vertical plane like this. When these go in the water, they're going to lay flat. And the thing of it is, when tog jigging, from what I understand, when tog jigging started to become popular, this is the type of jig that was used. And matter of fact, you can still buy these as tog jigs today. So one of the reasons I purchased this type of a mold and this type of a jig is so I'd have double duty. I can use it uh, as a bucktail. I can put hair on it and I can troll it through the water or jig it across the bottom for fluke or whatever. And I can also use it as a tog jig. It just depends on the size. The fact that it lays flat isn't really gonna make a difference for me because if you're gonna have crab on here, it's gonna be up a little bit anyway. And so it's just a matter of setting the hook. Or when you do set the hook, it's going to turn anyway, and that hook is going to turn in the fish's mouth. As I said, these are still popular today as tog jigs, and that's why I went with this, so I could have double duty and save some money in the process. So now that I've explained why we're using that type of jig, I'm going to show you the mold that we're using right here. This happens to be a model JFS dash five dash a and this mold here does anywhere from a quarter ounce all the way up to one ounce and the the jigs i'm going to be using in this mold are the three quarters specifically i'll actually pour some five eighths as well for slack water and and you know not too deep and then i'm also going to be pouring mainly three quarter one inch and then i have another mold that is going to be covering inch and a half two inch and two and a half inch and so I'll be using both of those and so let's get over to the pouring table and I'll show you the process it's really simple and then we'll jump into painting and I show you how simple that is as well and before you know it you'll be having your own tog jigs filling your box with them so now what I want to do with that once that wax is dissipated the, the smoke from I just want to clean this up and you can see see the garbage I'm getting out of that just tap it on my sacrificial piece of wood here and just want it fairly clean that's pretty clean right there now we can start pouring so the very first thing you need to do with a mold is you need to clean it and what I usually do it has a little bit of oil or whatever on it and I want to make sure that you know it's nice and clean so I usually just take a q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol and I just clean all the cavities out like this then I take a candle and I light it 
and I hold it up so you can see the soot coming off of it and I sit up all the cavities and hook slots in the mold and what that does is allow the lead to release really easily and you don't have to do this every time maybe once every 50 pours or so um, just sit it up again or whenever you see it's getting uh, down a little bit or it's becoming more difficult to release so the next thing after that is see, you can see I got some of my fingers here so the next thing after that is you're going to want to heat up the mold. Now there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can take and fill the mold with lead, which is what I prefer to do. And you can you can do that on jig type molds with a very small hook slot. The, the lead will solidify, but you can't do it on certain molds like blade bait molds and other things where the lead will run out the bottom. So you can do that or you can set it on top of the lead pot like that and just let it come up to temperature. It takes maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I prefer the quicker way, and so what I'll do is I'll just fill this up, and just like this, and I'm gonna just connect all the cavities. Just like that. And I'll show you why I connect them all across the top. It's simply just a matter then of opening them up, and you can see them all in there. Very nice. Now what I'm going to do is just take this and wiggle it out and I've got all of these together. It's so much easier. And then what I do is I just gently place them in the lead pot and remelt them again. And I'll do that four or five times. That will bring this mold up to temperature and allow all the lead to flow into all the little nooks and crannies very quickly. And you won't get any voids or anything that way with your jigs. So let me finish this up and I'll show you about the hooks and the placement. So now that I've got the mold up to temperature, I'm going to place the hooks in and do the pours. Uh, you have to make sure that the type of hook matches the mold. For instance, this mold here only accepts eagle claw hooks. And for this cavity here, this one inch, it's 5-0. It says right on here. Uh, for this cavity, is a 4-0. So I'll take the hooks out of the box. I will lay them on the jig and then I will close the jig and make my pour and it solidifies very quickly. One of the other things I like to do once the mold is up to temperature is just take the candle like this and I just touch it to the hinges that are hot and I melt in a little wax and that makes everything work real easy just like that. So let's go over to the hook box and we'll select a couple of hooks to put in the mold. So I keep my hooks in a box like this and I have 1020, the 3-0 is on order, it's coming. So I have 1020, 3-0, 4-0, 5-0, 6-0, 7-0 hooks. And so what that requires is 5-0 right here and a 4-0 hook right here. So let's go place them in the mold and then we'll make some pours. So I just placed the hooks in the slot like that. The 4-0 there, the 5-0 there. And now all I'm going to do is just close it. What I want is a click sound. Like that. You don't want a thud. If it's thud, then the hooks aren't seated right. And then I also look to make sure that the seam up here is closed tight. Now we'll make a couple of pours. And it only takes a second or so to solidify. And there you are. Two nice tog jigs. The hooks aren't going to be hot at this point. It takes a little bit for them to warm up. Now we'll just repeat the process. I'll do this on all the different sizes from three quarter all the way up to two and a half. And then we'll jump over and I'll show you how to paint them. So now they have some of the smaller jigs poured. I'll move on to the other mold with the larger sizes. I've already put the hooks in. And now it's just a matter of pouring these. I've already warmed up the mold. And in case you're wondering where I get my components from, like the molds and the hooks and stuff, I get it from a place called Rock Island. And uh, they're really good. I'll put a link in the description below. They're not sponsored or anything. There's the jigs, how they come out nice and clean. And you just lift them out of there, right like that. Two and a half, two, one and a half. But I get my components here. They're very uh, reasonable with their price and they're not sponsored as I say but I really like doing business with them. 
So um, you can get them anywhere you want, but I'll put the link in the description below if it helps you. So now that we have these poured, what I'm going to do is show you how to remove the sprues. I'll pour some more of these and we'll move on to paint. So to remove the sprue, all you really need is, these are cooled down now, and so all you really need is a pair of pliers and you take your jig, you grab a hold of the sprue up here on top where we poured things, and you just give it a little wiggle back and forth, not much, and it breaks off really nice and clean. You can see that. So I just break those off. Then what I usually do is take a file and just back drag because it's a little, little rough right here. I just back drag it with a file over some newspaper, pull up the newspaper, throw it out. I make sure I wash my hands when I'm done, and then I move on to paint. So I'm going to have a several of these to do, and I'll catch up with you on the other side. So a couple of things we're going to need for painting. Uh, we'll need a heat gun or a torch. You can have that. Uh, I have these fluid beds that I made. Uh, I got this from uh, an idea on somebody else on YouTube. They're really easy to make. They cost about $2 a piece, and um, they'll really make a difference when you dip in the powder coat paint. I'm powder coat painting all these and I'm not doing any airbrush on these. A lot of times I'll airbrush my lures. These are all powder coat because they're going to be banging on rocks all the time and the powder coat will really hold up especially once we bake it in the toaster oven right here. So uh, the other thing you're going to need is a air bubbler like this. This is a 110 volt air bubbler. Uh, this is the one I use in one of my portable live well and so I just borrow it when I'm going to use uh, the fluid beds. Uh, you'll need some water right here and then whatever powder paints you're going to use. These are the uh, powder coat paints I buy. I buy them in two ounce jars and uh, again I usually get these from uh, Rock Island. The description's below. And so I have some different colors here. I have uh, chartreuse. That one I showed you was pumpkin seed. This is white. And then I have an orange. And so, you know, you can be creative and make these however you want. Uh, black and white, pumpkin seed orange. We're going to mix it up a little bit. And so, the way, what we're going to do is we're going to first dip them and coat the entire jig. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to use these acid brushes. You can get these at Harbor Freight for like $5 for a whole pack. And then what I'm going to do is just dip it in the paint just like this a little bit and then I'll just tap it and you can see the I don't know if you can see that but the paint falls right off and we'll just put some speckling all around the jig and then we'll bake them so uh, basically let's get started and I'll show you how, how we're going to do it what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up to where I think it's going to hold the paint I'm going to dip the paint in here and then it will stick on here and I will heat it up again and then I'll tap on some paint on both sides like that, speckle it up how I want to, dip it in the water real quick to set it and then I'll set it aside. Once I have them all done like that, then I'll bake them. So let's do a couple right here. First I'm going to put the paint in and turn on the air bubbler. So I put the chartreuse in here for the base paint and as you can see the bubbles are coming up all around this and what that does is it fluffs up the paint so when I dip the lure in it's a lot like liquid it just goes right in and out I don't have to wiggle it down into the paint and pull it back out and, and when you do that you sometimes get too much paint on the jig because it's in too long this way I can just dip it in and out and so I just want to bring this down a little bit and just just enough so it's moving around you can I don't know if you can see that but it it's flowing almost like water and that's what I want there we go I like that all right now I'll get the heat gun we'll heat it up and we'll take a dip in there I will uh, preload the brush here with a little bit of I'll just stick it in here like that now let's turn the heat gun on I'm gonna run it on high and I'll just Start with a smaller jig like this. It doesn't take long to heat these up. It 
I'm going to use a pair of pliers just to uh, make it a little easier. You got to make sure it's warm enough. Let me see what about that. And that's what you want. You see how it comes out all glossy? That's perfect. Now I'll just heat it up a little bit. And sprinkle some on here. Oh, that's pretty. Now what we'll do is dip it in the water. And that will get it all set on there. Now we can set it down and do another one. Make lines, you can do all kinds of stuff with this. There we go. Alright, dip it in the water, set it down. Okay, we'll mix up different colors and we'll keep going. I'm going to switch up some colors now. This is going to be a black with a blue flake and a chartreuse sprinkle on top. Sort of looks like a night sky. So I'll just heat this up till you know it's good and hot. Not super hot, but enough. I just dip it in. You can see it comes out right away with that beautiful black blue on it. I heat it up a little more. I'm going to go over and grab some blue f or some chartreuse like this and just sprinkle it on. Heat up again. That's how that comes out. Nice. Nice and colorful. Do one more with that color, and then I'll switch again. With all our jigs painted, now our next step is to put them in the oven, and I just hang them on the rack, and I bake them for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. So let me set them on the rack, I'll show you what that looks like. So what I've did is I've laid them all out hanging from the rack, just like that. I just want to make sure there's a space between. And this is just a regular toaster oven my son was gracious enough to give me and uh, it works really well. So I'll just set the temperature at uh, 350 for about 20 minutes and that will bake these to an ultra hard finish that's not going to chip. So I'll just close the door and set this and then we just wait. Okay while well, the other batch is in the uh, toaster oven cooling off I thought I'd show you the eight variations of colors I made. And I like the speckled colors on these. 
uh, rather than just making them plain. You can make them any way you want. It's all about being create, creative and having fun. So let me just show you these, uh, and I'll go through them down, uh, down the list here. Uh, this here has a chartreuse base and a red and pumpkin seed speckle on it to cover that. This has a chartreuse base and a red speckle flake on top. This one has a chartreuse base and it has pumpkin seed on top. And this one I call the flag. It is a black and blue flake with a red and white speckle on it. And then this one up here is white with pumpkin seed speckle. And I call this one Midnight Sky. It is uh, black with blue flake and it's got chartreuse speckle on it. This one is a pumpkin seed base with a red speckle on it. And finally, last but not least, is a white base with a red speckle on that. So take a look at these and tell me uh, you know, which one you like the best. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd really like to, to see which one is uh, most popular for you and uh, go from there. So as soon as that other batch cools down, I'll uh, gather these up, put them in my tackle box, and uh, we'll be ready to fish. Uh, I hope you saw how easy it was to do this and what a money saver it could be for you. And uh, I hope you got a lot out of this video. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. You know, I hope that video was helpful to you and I hope you liked the content. And, you know, if you did, I'd really encourage you to give it a thumbs up. And consider subscribing to our channel as well. And if you do, make sure you hit that notification bell so you'll be up to date on all the videos as soon as they come out. You know, today was all about tog jigs. And we made them really pretty and we made them really colorful. And part of the reason we did that is to help entice the fish to bite. You know, let me ask you one question. What is it that would entice you to want to have a relationship with God? You know, in the world there's so many things that that catch our eye, so many things that draw us even away from God that we pursue and, and go after. But you know, what is it that you and I, do you think, would attract us to have a relationship with God? Well, let me tell you, when I was growing up and I was much younger, you know, I had a dandruff problem, so I was called Snow White. My ears stuck out, it was called Dumbo. I was made fun of and, and put down a great deal in my life. And the one thing I always looked for was love. And you know, when someone finally came and told me about how much Jesus Christ loved me, just like I'm telling you right now, um, I ran to his arms because I knew that there was finally uh, uh, someone out there that wanted to love me for who I was and would never abandon me or turn their back on me. And you know, that enticed me to have a relationship with God. Maybe you're in the same position I am. I don't know. Maybe you've got struggles, sin issues. I don't know where you are in this life, but I will tell you this, and that is that God's arms are open wide for you and that he loves you more than you could ever realize. So today, if you're longing to have a relationship with God, if, if it's, you feel it's time in your life to run into his arms, I, I would just ask you to move in that direction. And you know, if you're not sure how to do that, you know, I've written a free book. It's called Growing Deep. It's in the description below. But it'll share with you a little bit about my life. It'll share with you the scriptures. And it'll show you how you can not only have your sins forgiven and come into a right relationship with God, but how you can walk with Him on a daily basis. And so I'd really encourage you to check out the book. It might be just what you've been longing for your whole life. So again, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We really appreciate it. And you know, next time you're out in the outdoors, just remember that creation is God's playground that he gave to you and me because he loves us. So until the next video, take care and God bless.